My next question is about the delegated authority list for the 2nd of December to the 5th of January, which is on page 327 of tonight's agenda. My first question is about retrospective accommodation approval, DA 2020 374, where it says the change of use from residential to visitor accommodation retrospective. Please, can I um, learn about what, uh, what the context of this is? Was somebody running visitor accommodation without requisite approvals? If so, for how long? What's the penalty for doing that? Uh, how often does this type of thing happen in Kingborough and how do we stop it from happening again? Ms Tyler Moore. Um, through you, Mayor, a um, few questions in there, so I'll do my best to answer them. The, um, yes, the visitor accommodation was operating without approval. It um, was brought to our attention that that was the case. So before, um, I believe it was last year, off the top of my um, memory, that the state government brought in the requirement where Airbnb had to put their planning permit number in, so it was a lot easier that people were operating them without doing that. Um, the state government provides us that data now, um, although it's a, a mess of data, um, it's um, not well collated and it has a lot of errors in it which we fed back to the state government to enable councils to do the enforcement for that. Um, so that should help us be able to do it. We do on occasion... Um, look on that, but we just don't have the resource to proactively look at it. Um, certainly um, any complaints we do that uh, and follow it up. The, this application, I'm not sure how long it operated beforehand, it's not something we got caught up on. There was no um, infringement notice, so no large penalty issued to them, but they were required to pay double fees as it was a retrospective application and now they're in compliance with their requirements. Thanks. Is this something that happens rarely, would you say, or often? or? Somewhere in between. Be somewhere, <laughs> through you, Mayor, be somewhere in between. Um, there are properties that we know that are operating and we do our best to um, keep ahead of them and if we can get that cleansed data, that's going to make it better for us to do it, but it does take resourcing to do it. So there are some out there. Some people don't genuinely don't realise that they needed a permit to do it, um, although there's been a lot of advertising through the state government. They do need that. Um, and it's important because... Um, not just planning, but under the building regulations, there's certain requirements they need, and um, the safety of the public is our priority. So Thanks in so. terms of um, fire, f fire restrictions and things like that. I think, yeah, thanks very much. And um, also it's a competitive disadvantage, I guess, to everybody who, who is doing the right thing. And my next question on DAs is about the shipping containers. So there's two DAs here, DA 2019-64 in Tinderbox and DA 2020-545 at Apollo Bay. Both of these include the change of use from outbuilding to dwelling, including the additions of shipping containers. My first question on that is for what purpose are these shipping containers being used in this instance and what, if any, are the special considerations that council and developers need to take into account when assessing shipping containers as dwellings? For example, colour, settings, finishings, ventilation, cladding, insulation? Ms. Um, through you, Mayor. The um, shipping containers in these two instances are both used for outbuildings, so therefore you can't use them for habitation. We write a condition on there that says that. If you did want to convert an shipping container for habitation purposes, you also need to get building approval. Um, it has to be converted appropriately. Um, and when we, one of those matters actually came before the chambers um, and was considered. So it depends on the zone and the overlay controls whether we consider um, things such as the biodiversity codes, the vegetation removal, the scenic codes, picks up colours, um, site levelling, all those sorts of elements of it depends on the zone and the overlay. So for these particular ones, um, they did have the scenic landscape code, so we did look at the colour. Um, vegetation had been removed, but we addressed that in the planning permit. Um, and the questions that you had about ventilation and so forth and insulation, that all relates to if it was a habitable building, but it's just an outbuilding. And we don't need to know the specific purpose of an outbuilding because it's just classed as outbuilding. But typically people say car storage, storage, um, shed things like that, so they all met those requirements. Thank you, that's very helpful.